Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, it's day seven of RPG A Day 2018. And our question or prompt for today is, how can a GM make the stakes important? And the answer is, I got news for you. You can't. That's the short answer. Um, no matter how compelling or thrilling or exciting you think you've made your premise or your pitch, and we've just got to get this yellow fever serum to the good folks of Carson City before the children in the orphanage die, you know, unless the players have some kind of skin in the game, it really doesn't matter. You know, and we've all sat through those games where it's been kind of boring, and for whatever reason, the stakes aren't really important. And, you know, as players, we just kind of don't care. We're sitting there rolling dice, and the game master's giving it to him uh, his spiel or whatever, and it's just not really happening, and nobody likes that game. Um, so, you know, this sounds like maybe the players should meet you halfway and kind of try to buy into this thing, right? And that, that is definitely part of it, but that's only half the battle. Um, until the... Uh, the players are squirming in their seats until, like, when that NPC comes around the corner and, you know, they, they all kind of give this in, involuntary, like, gasp of, oh, no, not this. Um, it, it, you know, when the dice come out, they just start to, like, freak out. And until that's happening, you know, the stakes really aren't all that important yet, you know. Um, now, this next point isn't really the heart of the matter, but it is important. Like, when the dice come out, don't fudge the dice rolls, you know. The players need to know that, like, when these dice are rolled, it's for real. And we're not going to screw around with the results. You know, we're going to let the plastic gods speak. And by the same token, like, you know, why are you taking them out in the first place? Don't take them out for nothing. This doesn't mean that every time you roll dice has to be epic or unbelievable. This is, like, a major thing. But if there's a chance of failure, if there's a chance of some kind of consequences, if those consequences would be interesting, that's when they should come up. And you know, or come out, and you'll know that they're doing their job if the players once again are squirming, like leaning over, like, oh man, you know, is, is this going to be a success or failure? Or what's going to happen here? And at that point, you know, the stakes are, are feeling really real at that particular point. Um, it still isn't the real answer, but the stakes really have to make sense for the fiction, not just for the genre, but for the specific situation. You got to always ask yourself as a game master, you're looking to see what's happening, you're paying attention to what's happening in a particular scenario. What would happen if they did this? Or what might happen if they did this? And, you know, sometimes you need to keep that to yourself because there's no way they would know. Sometimes you need to misdirect them and still let them know there'd be some kind of consequences. But if it makes any kind of sense that the characters would know what the consequences of a particular action or not doing a particular action uh, were, let them know. It's like Dr. Strangelove said, you know, the whole point of a doomsday device is... The, you let, gotta let, let the world know. Why didn't you let the world know? Why didn't you tell the world? That's the whole point. The world isn't going to be scared unless you let them know there's a doomsday device and they can't do this thing. So let the players know what the consequences might be of, of acting or not acting. And then the stakes start to get higher all of a sudden. But still, you know, how do you actually get real stakes? Well, the, the, uh, the real answer is you don't define what the stakes are. The players do. Their characters do. So pay attention to their characters. Find out what they're interested in. Find out what they're afraid of. Find out what they want. Find out what their motivations are. Find out what makes them tick. This is one of the reasons that I'm not a big fan of, you know, games which are about the story or, you know, about, like, what the players should be doing. I'm a much bigger fan of, okay, let's have an, a dynamic world. Let's put a bunch of premises, a bunch of hooks out there. Release the characters. Find out what they do. Find out what they're really interested in. Pay attention to that. See what kind of relationships they develop. Uh, see what uh, what makes them tick. See what they get, you know, once again, what they get scared of, what they seem to really go after, what they seem to value, all that sort of stuff. Start paying attention to that. Start, you know, doing some experiments. You know, throw out little, you know, just dangle some carrots. Throw out some bait there. See if they take the bait or not. See what they do. And then, at this point, you know what the stakes are. Hit them below the belt. Bam. And, no, you don't, I'm not saying be a jerk DM. Or jerk, or jerk GM. Uh, you may not like the tone of the game, and not all games have that tone. It's not a, you know, it doesn't really matter. Some of the best writing about how to be a game master in terms of listening to what the players are telling you the stakes are and then messing with them is Apocalypse World. It doesn't matter whether you like PBTA games or not. It really doesn't matter. That's some great writing in there. I remember reading that for the first time thinking, that's brilliant stuff. That's stuff I've done. But he goes into detail about just figure out, you know, let, let them tell you what it is that they want, what they don't want, and then mess with that. <laughs> so, you know, at that point, then it's on. Then you can start, you know, uh, as a game master, uh, pr pr providing them with these stakes and these consequences and, and these, these hard choices they need to make 
uh, based on things that they really value. And then you don't have to do any work at all. All you need to do is kind of watch and then, you know, throw the stakes back at them. One of the best games I've ever been in, you know, it was exhausting. Like it really felt like I had been to therapy or something like that, or these things had happened to me, was uh, this two-part game that Francois Letart uh, ran for me in, in uh, our All for One Regime Diabolique uh, game, and it was called Not, uh, Not How It Used to Be. And so my character goes back. He, he goes on some mission, but then goes back to his old province and what have you. And Francois had paid attention to a lot of things I had said about my character, about my character's history, about the things that he valued, all this sort of stuff, and he just beat the crap out of my character and didn't bring like one or two or three things, but just in all these different ways. He presented me with a bunch of hard choices, with a bunch of just difficult situations where I was powerless. He, he, you know, there were a lot of stakes. There were a lot of consequences. I had to make some really fundamentally hard decisions between things that like either way I would be sacrificing something else, things that were important to me. I had to choose which one do I really value the most. That was a great game. That, to me, is when role-playing games, you know, really become magical and really exciting and really meaningful. And, you know, all you have to do as a game master is simply watch what the players, what their characters are telling you are the real stakes and then capitalize upon that. And that's how you make the stakes seem important. You don't make them seem important at all. They are important. You simply activate them or use them. And so that's pretty much how it works at least in my experience so far. So, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.